so um yeah um y y you know like um like yeah <laughs> so those are filler words i'm sure you all recognize them I sure do. And if you find that you're using them more often than not in your daily speech, I just want to let you know that one, it is completely normal. Everybody does it. In today's segment of Yvonne Looks Into, we're going to tap into filler words and phrases. Why? Many of you express wanting to minimize that in either your daily speech or in any public speaking appearances that you have. And I want to look into why we use filler words, how we use them, how often we're using them. Does someone use them more often than others? And we're going to explore that today because exploring, acknowledging, and becoming really aware of when we do use filler words and what triggers us to do those things will not only boost our own confidence as public speakers, but it'll boost the confidence of our audience in trusting us as the subject matter experts. So let's get into it. What is a filler word? First, let's define that. A filler word is a meaningless word, phrase, or sound that's used to mark pause or hesitation in speech. Why do we use filler words? There are so many reasons as to why we use filler words, and today we'll explore a couple of them. I also have a post on my timeline that you can check out for a reminder to go back to all the time. One, we use them to explain something difficult. In our minds, we think, hey, let me give my audience a little bit more time to grasp what I'm trying to say and we use filler words to kind of create a break in between ideas. So if I say something that I think is difficult, I'll use a filler word to let you catch up a little bit and then move on to the next thing that I have to say. Second, to be polite. As is the case, filler words really do dilute your message. And so when you have to deliver something unpleasant or you want to say no, but don't want to seem or appear rude, Using filler words makes the message a little less harsh. Third, it truly is a habit. We go and use filler words unchecked in our daily communications with our friends. You know, why would our friends check, check us and say, hey, you used liked one too many times, unless they like to point those kinds of things out, right? But we use these and it's what we practice the most. So it's naturally what we will use the most. And lastly, our own brains haven't caught up yet. So if someone asks us a question, we say, instead, instead of pausing and saying, you know, give me some time to think about it, we kind of just go like, uh, um, well, uh, yes, that's very uh, important that you uh, bring that, again, your message is diluted a bit, right? And sometimes we can even use filler words to make sure that other people know we're not done talking. So in our daily conversations with folks, if I pause, that may be a cue for the person that I'm talking to to pick up and continue the conversation, right? We're all a little bit not okay with awkward silence. And so filler words help fill that void. What does a filler word communicate to the person receiving your message? I want to read this directly from the Harvard Business Review. And it says, use sparingly and effectively, filler words can make you more relatable to your audience give you time to catch your breath and emphasize key points. But when they become crutch words used out of nervousness or lack of preparation, they hurt your credibility. And this credibility piece is super important, right? You don't want to use filler words and have your audience lose credibility in you and not see you as the expert in that subject matter. But it's also important to point out that you can also use filler words to be relatable to your audience, to give yourself some time to catch a breath and again to emphasize key points. This is super important. There's pros and cons to everything in life, right? And so we have to be aware of when we're using filler words and why we're using them. To, to then begin to peel away and remove the filler words that aren't doing our speech any good. And now I'd like to share something a little bit more personal, but my word for the year is intentionality, to be intentional. And I was seeing this all over, you know, I would see it on Instagram posts, I it would be brought up in conversations and in spaces that I'm a part of, and I just took it as a sign to adopt that word as my word of the year. And so I did. And part of that was me wanting to be more intentional with the words that I use. 
I pay closer attention to how I use filler words in the workspace, at school, and more formal settings. You know, with my friends, I say like, and so yeah, one too many times, and they sort of just have to deal with it, but I'm working on that one too. And so what that has prompted me to do is because I'm hyper aware of how I use filler words and when I use them, it means that I'm also hyper aware of when others are using filler words. And in my interactions, whether at work, anywhere i've noticed that women use them a lot more than men do and i wanted to look into that i wanted to know do men use do women use more filler words than men how often you know and so part of what we'll look at today is me either debunking that belief that observation or completely solidifying that observation so let's get into it and please excuse i will be reading some of these things from my screen because i want to make sure that i get all of the information and the statistics and the names all correctly for you all. Linguistics professor Mark Liberman from the University of Pennsylvania has studied the use of filler words across demographics, one of those being gender. So in an article posted on HuffPost, we can read about his data showing that women are more likely, likely excuse me, to use um, U-M, whereas men are more likely to use uh, uh in their as, as filler words during a pause in conversation he observed 11,972 speakers women used um 20 percent more than men and men used a uh, 250 percent more than women and overall men use filler words whether um or a uh, 38 percent more than women so my observation there is already debunked, but I think there's so many layers to this that we need to look into it even further. The studies also found that men toned down the use of a, uh, but increased the use of um when talking to women. And women would increase the use of a, uh, uh, when they were talking to men. So the exact numbers are men use um 8% more often when speaking to women and women use a uh, uh 20% more often when speaking to men. Is that not wild? My mind. And while there really isn't any direct research because there still needs to be more research done in this area of gender and filler words and, and linguistics what we're drawn to here is the meaning of each one of these filler words and how they're used the article says we can use um as we're deciding whether we'd like to talk and uh as we're deciding what to say when i read this my wheels were already turning because while not 100 percent backed up yet it makes sense that women use um while men use uh. Women are often in rooms, unfortunately, with a whole bunch of men. And men, well, they're used to taking up space. So, where um is a little bit more of a polite filler word, like, hey, I kind of want to step in here, but I don't want to step on your toes, uh is a little bit more of like a filler word that tells you, hey, I'm taking up space. I have, I'm not done saying what I need to say, but I'm getting there. So bear with me. And then the article ends by pointing out that um and a uh usage is a product of our social environments and that of course more research needs to be done in the area of this what they called gender divide and the role of gender in filler words but really quickly again i'd like to bring us back to the word uh the, to, to that stat the word uh being used 20 percent more when talking to men by, by women could this be maybe women wanting to be interrupted less? <laughs> one of those, it's one of those cases where I am going to adopt your language so that you clearly understand that I have something to say and I'm taking up space. I don't know. What do you all think? And lastly, the reason we are all here, how do I stop using filler words and phrases? I don't want to use them anymore. One, I just like to start off by saying that that is a very hard you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself okay everyone around you uses them we're we've gotten used to using them it's a very hard habit to break but we can do it at specific times and again be very intentional with how we use filler words and when we use them the first step we have to take is to listen for them you really don't know 
what to fix when you don't pay attention and listen for them. It was kind of like when I got my car for the first time and I thought, wow, my car is so special and unique. No one has this car. And as soon as I had my car and I had a good visual of it, I knew exactly what it looked like, the model, everything. I drive and every mile I would see a car just like mine. Same with filler words. I don't know if that made sense, but same with filler words. When I am intentional about knowing and hearing out when I use filler words, then they'll start to bug you. I mean, think about it, right? We've all been in a presentation where someone whispers over at you like, man, have you heard how many times they use the word like? And in your head, you say, no, I hadn't up until now. And now you can't unhear how often they use the word like. So listen for them. Be intentional with your words. It's okay to take a pause in your speech and give yourself some time to answer. And that kind of ties into the third, which is there's no pressure to answer so quickly. In a conversation with, with a man, as we learned, you may even want to use the word uh, as, a, as a filler word just to let them know, hey, I'm still, I'm still talking. I'm not done talking yet. <laughs> but in something like a Q&A session or a speech, the floor is yours. Everybody's on your timeline. So take a pause, collect your thoughts and answer. And the very last one, and this is true for many, many, many industries and anything really that you wanna get really good at is practice. Being prepared and practicing will always, always be a benefit to you. And that was a very brief segment of Yvonne Looks Into. I have become very interested in the psychology of public speaking and linguistics. And so I've been doing a lot of reading by the way, if you want the article that I pulled from, a couple of the articles that I pulled from for this, I can definitely send those over to you. So just send me a DM. And secondly, comment down below. Are there any other aspects of public speaking that are interesting to you that you would like me to look into? I am more than happy to do that. So thank you so much for, for watching this. Now go out there and master the art of public speaking.